The Lord be with you. And also you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Herod the ruler heard reports about Jesus, and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had been telling him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Though Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd because they regarded John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company, and she pleased Herod so much that he promised an oath to grant her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. The king was grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison. The head was brought on a platter and given to the girl who brought it to her mother. His disciples came and took the body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a very popular musical over the last few years named Wicked. It's the story of Alphaba, who would later become the Wicked Witch of the West from the Wizard of Oz. And it's a wonderful story that, that gives a backstory to this, this character that we knew for generations as being wicked. But the musical lets us know how she became wicked and how she got the title. And in reality, she was a very good person. And other people tried to label her as wicked. And over time, she fulfilled that label. And one of the great songs from the musical is called No Good Deed Goes Unpunished. And I think many of us can understand that sentiment, and we see that here in our readings. Jeremiah, a mighty prophet, has challenged the priests and the leaders in Jerusalem in letting them know that what they think of as being good is truly not what God wishes of them. They have redefined what is good for their society apart from what God truly wishes for them and from them. The same thing happens with Herod. In some ways, Herod wants to be a good leader, but he gets turned from other people's wishes, whether it be his wife, whether it be his daughter. He cares about what the crowd thinks of him without thinking, what is it that God asks of Herod at that moment? And that's something for us to, to be challenged with in our daily lives. Are we seeking out to do our own good or the good that God calls us to live? Throughout the Gospels and throughout the Scriptures, we are given examples of what God considers good. All of creation that God created is good, and therefore we must regard creation as good and treat all life as good. We must be healers. We must be life givers. We must be forgivers as well. All of this is the example that Jesus gave to his disciples and gives to us. And so let that be a prayer for each of us today to consider the good that God has given to us and to pay attention to the good that we give to others. May it truly be God's goodness that we share for one and for all. 
And as we continue with our liturgy, let us take a moment to offer our prayers to our loving and good God. We pray for the church around the world. We pray for Pope Benedict, for all bishops and our church leaders, that they, inspired by the Gospels and strengthened by the sacraments, give God's goodness to the world, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our local communities, for our leaders, for all who teach us about goodness, that they may be strengthened in their hope and in their love, we pray to the Lord. We pray in a special way this day for the Jesuits in honor of St. Ignatius this feast day, for their continued good work here in Canada, but also in missions around the world, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for our donors and those who have made this Mass possible, for their intentions and for our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we place before you our prayers and our petitions. We ask that you hear these prayers and answer them according to your will. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you, please, with sacrifice, we offer you with humble and with contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. Thank you. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice with my hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all the church. Lord God, be pleased with the gifts we present to you at this celebration in honor of St. Ignatius. Make us truly holy by this Eucharist, which, gives, which you give us as the source of all holiness. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. 